Tracy Caldwell Dyson vuelve al espacio, a la estación espacial, después de 14 años. Esta veterana astronauta de la NASA va a ser su tercer vuelo al espacio, segundo de larga duración, y va a lanzar nuevamente desde el cosmódromo de Baikonur en Kazajstán, junto con sus compañeros de tripulación, una Soyuz MS-25, el comandante Oleg Novitsky y la que ellos llaman la participante espacial Marina Vasilevskaya de Bielorrusia, que se ganó su lugar eh, compitiendo con otros 3.000 participantes que intentaban ganar esta especie de iniciativa de la Agencia Espacial de Bielorrusia intentando poner en órbita a la, a la primera mujer de ese país. Eh, tuve uno, una chance de poder hablar unos minutos con Tracy Caldwell Dyson. Ella estaba en Moscú, eh, yo estaba acá en Cabo Cañaveral. Ella por video, yo por teléfono, una entrevista que salió en vivo por NASA TV. Y la verdad es que tenía mucha curiosidad de hablar, no solamente con una persona que tiene la experiencia de Tracy, sino... Eh, hacerle preguntas desde qué va a hacer a, cuando llegue, después de estar 14 años en un lugar tan especial es, imagínense volver, o haber ido de trabajo a algún lugar que significó mucho para ustedes o de vacaciones y, y volver a ese mismo lugar 14 años después qué es lo primero que va a hacer eh, y por supuesto hablamos un poco de los experimentos que va a realizar caminatas espaciales su relación con la tripulación una tripulación, sus compañeros se van a quedar solamente 12 días, tanto eh, Novitsky como Vasilevskaya van a volver en 12 días, junto con Laurel O'Hara, que ha estado allí durante 6 meses lanzando en otra Soyuz, y Tracy se va a quedar 6 meses más. Así que bueno, hablamos unos minutos un poquito de todos, preguntas personales, preguntas de trabajo, pero ojalá la disfruten. Tracy, good morning. How are you? Thank you for sharing some minutes with me. Yeah, I'm doing good, Manuel. Thank you. Looking forward to it. Uh, Tracy, you're going back to the space station after 14 years, and I'm so curious to know what is it that the first thing you're going to do after arriving there? I mean, besides having your crewmates and after the welcoming ceremony, what is it that a returning astronaut would do? Are you visiting every segment and every corner to see how things have changed? <laughs> well, that's a really good idea. I, I I might do that, but but my goal will be to get into that cupola if um, we're allowed to open the shutters at that time. That'll be my first stop for sure. <laughs> right. I, I, we know that you're going to be extremely busy on board with both scientific and maintenance activities, but I know you will be working in a particular experiment to understand how fire behaves in space uh, using the combustion integrated rack. Could you please explain to us why it's so important to control fire in space and if you could describe its behavior in space because we know we've seen water uh tons of video of uh, astronauts like cleaning their hair but we haven't seen fire of course for obvious reason and we have we never do but could you please dis describe its behavior i'll do my best uh, having not seen fire in space which i'm extremely grateful for but we do train Uh, an inordinate amount of time um, on how to protect ourselves in case there is a fire. So I can tell you right now that we, as a core of astronauts and crew members on board the space station, are very interested in this kind of science. <laughs> um, and the way that uh, flames behave in space is actually pretty fascinating, where um, there's not, you know, especially in a controlled environment like in the SIR rack, the, the combustion integration rack, um, where it's a controlled environment and you don't have these buoyancy effects like you do here on earth and that classic shape of a flame is due to all of the um, convection that goes on here in the the 1g environment but up in space flames act like a sphere and so if you can think about how uh then that flame interacts with the atmosphere and fuel that um, it's much different than here on Earth. And the investigations that are ongoing um, are interested in looking at that interface and in particular how a flame spreads. And that's one of the things that we try to do. Like in the Soyuz, the only thing we can do when we're in that small capsule and if there is a fire that we experience is to evacuate the or to, to basically um, evacuate the air from our capsule. There's not a whole lot you can do to suppress a fire when you're um, in the environment, when you have to stay in the environment where the fire is. And so um, understanding how flames spread and what um, parameters um, 
help to extinguish a flame or to um, actually in, in entice it to, to spread are really important in spacecraft design and space station design. And so the study that is ongoing right now on board the space station is uh, looking at those kinds of uh, aspects. Thank you, Tracy. Uh, we saw you um, uh, training for EVA. And can you can you uh, tell us how many EVAs, EVAs are you going to do? And um, um, you've been already in three spacewalks uh, in space. Uh, is the training any different from your last mission? Uh, a little bit different. Uh, so we have three right now planned for our increment. And there are three of us who are qualified to do those EVAs. And so they will send us out in a pair in one of those combinations. And, I, and I'm certain that all three of us will get a chance to do one or two of those spacewalks. And so uh, looking forward to that. Um, the training has changed somewhat in that um, we, uh, goodness, when I was when I was going through my initial training as a ASCAN or an astronaut candidate, um, many of the EVAs that we did were shuttle based and they were highly choreographed. And um, the spacewalks that we do today, we have to train in a skills based uh, fashion as opposed to a task based fashion. And so the training that I've um, been involved in from uh, re since returning from the space station has really been focused on how we improve uh, the skills of our spacewalkers as they go out and do EVAs that they may not have practiced uh, much uh, on the ground. Um, I heard you mention several times the importance of mentorship in this career and how critical it is to have a mentor. Um, and I know you're mm -hmm. flying with uh, Marina Vasilevskaya, uh, first, for her first flight, um, and she's not a professional cosmonaut. I, do you believe that she consider you as a mentor, or at least for this mission? Um, Kosha, I would love to hear what her answer is on that one. Um, I, I do very much enjoy training with Marina. She's got a fantastic attitude. Um, what she lacks in experience. She makes up for in that attitude. She's um, with her background in um, as a flight attendant. She's no stranger to operations. And, uh, you know, we think of flight attendants as those who serve us drinks on uh, on our flights, but uh, they actually are there for our safety. And what I'm impressed with uh, with Marina is that she understands that she's really humble. She really appreciates um, this opportunity that she's been given. And because of that, um, it's been a real joy to work with her. Um, I do know that um, she's very respectful toward me and toward Alec. Um, and I, I imagine that um, that is in part because of our experience. And she uh, definitely is depending on us to help her uh, get through the things that are unfamiliar to her. And um, uh, so, yeah, I guess uh, I guess you could say that um, uh, we are, regardless of how she looks at us, uh, mentors of sorts. Tracy, have you left any personal objects somewhere in the station knowing that someday you would come back and see it again? I can't tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, 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 no. I, I took everything home with me um, that uh, meant a lot to me. And the only thing that I left up there was a note. Um, and I know that it was, the, I don't know if it's still there. I'm curious. Uh, but many of my uh, colleagues uh, who've been up there since I returned have told me that they saw this note. And it was one that I posted on our A-RED, our uh, resistive exercise device. And it read, nothing's more important than what you're doing right now. And that mantra applies to whatever you're doing on the, the space station, but in particular, when you're working out on that monstrous device. And that's what Tracy, I want to know, note. I know you're busy. Just last question. I know this is your uh, um, third flight to space, second long duration. Is there any room left for a fourth mission? Oh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> ask me that when I get back. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank Tracy. you. It's been a pleasure.